welcome back to another edition of Local Focus. We are so excited to be back in our upstairs studio. It's good to be home. We, we're back upstairs. We got the sofa chair back for the guests. Like everything feels normal again. We were downstairs. It was way too nice for us. The lighting was too bright. It was too big time. So we're back in our comfortable, quaint upstairs studio in the middle of football season. And we're excited about our guest today. Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, you can catch the radio show that comes on 610 The Sports Animal here on this channel in the morning, 7 to 10. And, and we have an appearance on Wednesday. Wednesday, I make an appearance in the morning with Jeff and JJ. And those guys asked me about a sleeper pick, maybe, that no one's talking about. And my guest today immediately, right away, came to the top of that list. I thought, man, you know, this kid's going to be really good. And by the time the season gets going, everyone's going to be talking about him. And he has proven us right. Volcano Vista quarterback Elliot Pasket Bell is my guest. Elliot, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Man, it's good to have you finally. Like we, we've been watching, and uh, and you are off to a really good start. Talk about that. Um, well, first two weeks have gone really well so far. I think we've been able to execute and show everybody that we play our own way of football, and we're really great at that. You know, if we're being honest, most of the time, whatever I say in the morning on Wednesday, it's like a coin flip, right? Like, yeah. I'm right half the time, I'm wrong half the time. So, that you've made me look so good, the way you've been playing the first two weeks, and I certainly appreciate it. But um, let's backtrack a little bit to last year, because you were kind of Mr. Everything, right, yeah. last year. So, talk about that. I mean, did that start right away in camp at the beginning of the season, where you were expected to play all these positions, or did it just happen naturally? Well... I consider myself more of a pretty good athlete where I can do most things on the field. I think I have a really good football mind, and I know ins and outs of most positions. And going into camp, I knew that I wouldn't really be the number one at quarterback. So we had Josh Gerardo last year. He was a great quarterback, a great friend of me. Um, and I was playing X receiver almost the whole season, opposite of Caden Valdez and Kieran Cordova, two great receivers. And I knew I wasn't as good as them at, at the wide receiver position. So... Uh, Coach Bowling really moved me around and showed me that I could do different things. I played H-back for a few games. I was in the backfield a lot, and then I got a few drives a game at quarterback, and I kind of did everything. So, well, first, you said, you know, what makes a good football mind? Because you said you think you have a great football mind. Well, what makes a great football mind? I think study, a lot of study, the paying attention to the details, the little details, um, being aware of a lot of things, being able to go through progressions, look at defenses before – snaps and just being aware of everything that's going on so you talk about study right mm -hmm. and so I think a lot of probably our audience doesn't think that maybe that happens at the high school level but it really does yeah. right? I mean I think people just assume yeah you guys show up to practice yeah. and do all this yeah. right and then go do whatever high school kids do after that right but no. there's a lot more film study that goes into high school football than maybe in years past so talk about that yeah um, well coach bowling is, and coach Juan they put a lot of emphasis on study and being prepared in preparation for each game we have. Um, at least three, four times a week we film in the office and coach goes through everything I did wrong and right on the previous game and everything I need to look for and see and be aware for the next game going forward. And technology is really advanced to like where they can just send huddle stuff that's marked up like yeah. pretty much to your phones, yeah. right? So it's like, you know, for all of our older audience that maybe that they're not used to any of that, talk about the technology piece. Like, I mean, it's pretty amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's great having a huddle is a really great resource for being able to study because we have the up top wide cam in the middle of the field. Then we have our end zone cam for a line and figuring out what they need to do. But it's really come a long way and it really helps because Coach Boeing will send me film at 6 o'clock at night and it'll be QB markup and it'll show me exactly what I did wrong and right on each play and what I need to fix going forward. What's uh, what's the closest after a game you've ever gotten that text? Hey, look at this. Um, pretty close after. Like the night of? You yeah. You get a lot of night of ones? Yeah. Hey, next time you need to watch for this, you got to look for that. You're not doing anything right here. Just stuff like that. Like, like are you ever thinking like, man, I'm, I'm still doing an ice bath. Why, yeah. is, yeah. why is he sending me this already? <laughs> yeah, but it's great having a coach that hands on and always telling me what I need to look for and what I need to focus on. Right. So you get into that year and I mean, you're on the field, no matter where you're playing, you're always on the field. Yep. So that, I mean, obviously that's a lot about your athletic ability. But then you do kind of get that shot at quarterback. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that when it happened. Uh, going into this season, or pretty much after last season, um, about November is when we started really using a football and getting back into the gym and figuring out our offense and who's going to be where. 
and I pretty much knew it was going to be my shot this year and that I was going to be starter week one and just working up from there um, I think I did a pretty good job elevating my game and figuring out what it, I what I needed to fix and what I needed to know for right. the season how did last year's experience help that? Because it's like it's not like they just threw you out there against like Highland and Valley. Yeah. No offense to those teams, <laughs> but I mean you got thrown into the fire yeah. against Rio Rancho and Cleveland. So yeah. talk about that. Well, Josh got hurt the first play of the Cleveland game after he threw a nice forty-yard touchdown on Caden Valdez, uh, and Josh came off the sideline. He was holding his sho- shoulder. And did you know right away? Yeah, I knew. <laughs> and I asked him, I was like, "Are you gonna be able to go?" He's like, "No, it's your time." I'm like. I'll try my best. And okay. And, and, I mean, you guys, you got off to a really good start. Yeah, we got off really hot. Um, uh, I feel like I did pretty well in the beginning, but I was a little nervous. I'm not afraid to admit that I had a lot of nerves going in because it was my first real time under the lights getting a chance. And uh, I started to crack a little bit right. as the game went on. And I think... But before we get to that, you yeah. guys built up a huge first yeah. half lead. Yeah. Because I remember I did that game, right? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you were feeling it pretty early. So you get your first chance. Mm-hmm. You're in the fire right away. Yeah. I mean, were you feeling that connection with those guys at receiver right away? Talk I, about that. I was feeling really good. Um, I've always had a great relationship with Caden, Kieran, Tristan I've known for years and years. Zay I've known for years and years. So I, we're all like a family on the offense and the defense. So I've always had a great connection with them. And going in, I just knew I needed to get the ball into the hands of my playmakers and they do the rest for me. Did that kind of settle your nerves? I mean, you got in there, you threw, yeah. you, you built the lead. Did that settle your nerves? Yeah, the first real touchdown that I threw was a 15-yard flat ball to Kieran on the 45, and he made three guys miss and ran 40 yards into the end zone. And then it was hey, like, hey, in the box score, that looks like a 65-yard yeah. completion. <laughs> yeah, and so I was just like, if I can do this, if I just need. If I can recognize where I need to put the ball and when, they'll do the rest for me. Right. We'll take our first time out here with Elliot Pascabell. I do want to talk about the second half of that game because obviously you guys let that one slip away. Yep. So I'm sure you learned a lot from that as well. We'll get back to Elliot after this break. Said they were tough. Said the red was really good too, but like the green, that's where it's at. Second and, and 10 for the 14. Into the end zone, and it's a touchdown. Real Rancho, just like that. So 46 seconds into the game, Real Rancho is on the board after the turnover. Cobos goes down. Meyer bumps it up, Wilson, boom. She scoped out her spot, put the protractor in her eye. Julian Lovato, forcing his way through. Lovato almost tripped up there, he'll cross it, and there's a goal! Ethan Wright, the flag stay down. The Sartans take the lead here late in the game. So second and 10 at the 39 yard line. Lomeli back to pass and he's, uh, the ball's knocked loose. Four Rio Rancho defenders are back there and it looks like Rio Rancho's got it. That's number 55, Jalen Pagio. Cobos goes down, sets it up to Myers. She decides for trickery, but Mark Holler was right there, all over it. There, kind of the ball placement. It's Hefner into the blocks of Iona Nelson. And twice! Nelson and Lujan each get one. Rivera, Conway, left side. Defense strings it out. And Conway makes it through five uh, five players who will be... Uh, the coach may point out that they didn't wrap up on that play in, uh, in film. A, a good uh, tackle. Let over to Davidson. Davidson dishes forward. Hoculus. 
And a couple of bodies coming together. Kokulis beats out McConnell for the shot. Barella with a diving save. We're in the second quarter. A late throw and a completion. Garris comes up with it and picked up the first down inside the 10 yard line. Not a good kick, they're going to get it inside Scorpion's territory. It's high, and Trujillo dropped it right at midfield. He's got some room towards the sideline, cuts back up at the 30, stutters back towards the 20, still on his feet at the 10. He's going to go all the way. Everybody misses, and it's a touchdown for Fabian Trujillo. That's his out. We're back with Volcano Vista Hawk quarterback Elliot Pasket Bell. We we're talking about the Cleveland game from last year, which is kind of your first, your first experience in the fire. You get off to this huge lead, and then obviously it goes sour in the second half. Yeah. So talk about that. Well, I think I started to get worried and unsure of myself and what I was doing once we hit. I think the second half, right before the second half, I think I threw an interception. And then I was like, I was unsure of myself and I was unsure of what to do with the ball when. As a quarterback, you can't do that. You have to be confident in everything right. you have to do. So even if you make a mistake, you have to forget about it and move forward to the next play. So what do you guys take out of that? I mean, obviously, the, you know, they come back. It's a huge comeback. Cleveland mm -hmm. gets the W. But I would imagine in the locker room, there's got to be at least a small sentiment of, hey, we can hang with these guys. We yeah. let this game get away. Yeah. Was there a lot of that, or were you guys just really, really yeah. deflated? We felt a lot of the mistakes were on us. I felt personally that game was all on me because I kind of – I crumbled. I'm not afraid to admit that, but I we we all felt that going forward we can hang with everybody. Right. So and then you get Rio Rancho as well, right? Yeah. So talk about that. We had a bunch of injuries going into that game. Um, we had a couple receivers out. Um, our running backs weren't feeling the greatest. I think we had an injury or two on the O line, and going into them, Rio's defense is a really complex defense. Right. It's it's the hardest to really know where they're coming from. There's a lot of movement on there. And me, my eyes aren't, weren't really trained yet. I didn't really know where to look and where the pressure was coming from all the time. And they, they're, they're really good at blitzing. And I couldn't really figure out where the blitz was coming from right. all the time. So what have you learned from that? I, I would imagine that those games are going to be really valuable this season. Because yeah. now when you get into district play, it's not going to be, oh, first time against those guys, yeah. right? So you had those on your belt. What do you think that's going to do for you and the team? this year having that experience? I think that's going to help us a lot because we really feel that there's there's nobody that can beat us but ourselves. And as long as we stick to us and play our game, that we can be the best team in the state if we really wanted to. Right. I want to move away from football for a second, mm -hmm. okay? Um, well, one, I got to ask this. Like, Josh and I are both Del Norte grads. We're, we're Knights, right? So yeah. we, we, were, uh, we were in high school once. And I tried my hardest to grow a goatee in high school. <laughs> So how long did that take to grow? Um, well, I didn't really try and grow it until about six, eight months ago. Okay. And because I'd shave it like every two weeks because it started, this is the awkward stage where it just looks really bad. And so one, one day I was like, I'm just going to let it grow. Right. And then I had a pretty good beard going for a while. Because okay. I could then, never, yeah. I, I got a couple down here yeah. and it was just a mess yeah. and I couldn't do that in high school. Yeah. And then I, I shaved it and it grew, it grew back and I'm working on growing it back fuller. Okay. And... Hopefully that'll come out good. What about like a you guys don't shave until you lose a game? Is, is that on the table? I could do that. I right. it's like it's good luck charm so far. Right, there you go. Okay. Now you do like everything away from football. You were telling me during the break like you're quite the outdoorsman, right? Yeah. So talk about that. Um, I love being outside. I love hanging out with my friends, going to play basketball, pick up, going for hikes. I'm from Seattle, so I love fishing. I love going outdoors, just biking. Me and my dad mountain bike a lot. Um, and just stuff like that, just being outdoors and being one of nature, I guess. Right. And but you were talking about not only you were talking about hike, you were talking about biking, you mm -hmm. were talking about uh, some rafting that you did, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that you could potentially get hurt at, right? Yeah. Like has Coach Wallen <laughs> had the talk like with you, like, hey, um, yeah. maybe just you know take it a little easy. Yeah. The the first few weeks of summer workouts, I, I rode my dirt bike to school, okay. and after we really started getting serious, he's like, 
no more of that. All right. I said, okay, I'm. So like you have yeah. claws, like it's like the pros, right? They have yeah, claws in their like contract. Claws. No ATVs during <laughs> yeah. the season. None of those things that can get you injured. So he had that talk with you. Yeah, he was just like, I said, no, no. I'm like, okay, I won't. <laughs> I mean, because those things are, I mean, those are all pretty high adrenaline, high risk factor yeah, the, things, right? The way I ride, too, I love going pedal to the metal. All right, so tell me about that. Like, where do you go? Um, I live right on the desert, and so I can go all the way through. I can sneak through to Rio Rancho from my house. It's like 12 minutes on the bike, and I know almost every single trail out there okay. like, from the little stretch of land that, that I go out on all the time. And what does that do for you? I mean, obviously, there's an adrenaline piece, mm -hmm. right? So talk yeah. about that. I like, I like, I'm kind of not an adrenaline junkie, but okay. I like having my adrenaline out there. My mom used to be like that too. She used to skydive and bungee, bungee jump all okay, the time. Okay, would you do those? Have you done those? No, I haven't. So but would you I, skydive? I would. Bungee? I think so. Okay. What, 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 bungee what, jumping would be a little scary. What is the thing that maybe you would think twice about? Like you see, you see on YouTube maybe or TikTok that you're like, oh, that one looks a little crazy. Um, I don't know. People go and like swim with sharks and stuff. I can't do that. Would you walk around the studio as let's say after 11 o'clock at night? No. Okay, so that's... <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, yeah. There's no chance. All right, all right. Uh, Sharks, yeah, okay. Yeah. So what about spiders? I'm fine with spiders. I hate snakes. Snakes, okay. snakes right. is okay. by far my biggest phobia. All right. So, but, okay, there's the adrenaline piece, obviously, mm -hmm. but I've also heard guys tell me that there's like a mental calm when yeah. you're just out there in the desert, too. Yeah. And that's hard to understand when you're doing that and you're going that fast and you're, you know, you're sideways, but is there a mental calm? Talk about that. Yeah, um... I like, I love hanging out with my friends and all that stuff, but I also like to be alone and just be in one with me and like kind of nature and going like as fast as I can for a little while. It's kind of just the focus that I have to be in the, in the moment because if I make really one mistake, then I could crash and hurt possibly, right. but I like, I love going fast. Now you're giving me some yoga vibes too. Do you do the opposite and do yoga too? No. Okay. All right. So you're <laughs> just the adrenaline. Me. All right. No. You're just the adrenaline side. Yeah. Okay. Um, craziest injury you've ever had dirt biking or mountain biking or any um of that stuff? i've got a few um last last summer i got a bunch like i tear up my legs a lot because okay. i i'm i think i'm a really good rider but i do tend to fall quite a bit because there's not i never really take breaks i love going for cruises where i just sit at like 30 miles an hour and just look at scenery but most of the time i'm pedal to the metal is there a teammate that can keep up with you or are you pretty much dominating um Jace Anderson, he's one of he's on a running back, H back receiver. Yeah. He has a little uh, he's a little ATV that we like to go out on sometimes, and so he'll ride with me. But it's not as fast as my bike. Now, do you guys do you guys hook up the GoPro when you go? Like, no, we don't do that. We probably should because we do some fun that stuff. That would be some pretty cool yeah, footage. Yeah, right? it really would. All right, so um, game week. I'm assuming none of this happens. No, right? no okay. of course not. So no. these are summer activities. Yeah. All right, so what does game week look like now for you guys? Because you're one of the top four teams in the state, right? Mm -hmm. And so I know Coach Wallen, you know, wants to get over that hump. Mm -hmm. So what does game week look, and look like typically at Volcano Vista High? Um, it's a lot, of serious, um, a lot of serious focus, mental focus for everything. Um, we like to have fun. Coach lets us have fun and um, – just be ourselves but also when we're on the field we're we're locked in he always says like you have to be checked in right. so we always try and check in right before we walk out on that field and we know what we need to do okay um what about i mean you guys have a pretty tough schedule this year yeah so i mean obviously as a quarterback you probably relish that you want to play the best oh, yeah. right but uh, i mean just talk about this early season schedule that you guys have uh so far we had las cruces which was no slouch at all uh, last year they got the better of us, but this year we took the W. Uh, West Mesa, who they they're a lot better than they were. Uh, well, you guys gave them a reality check real quick, though, didn't you? Like, let, let's talk about that game. Yeah. I mean, they they won the week before. They were feeling good about themselves. Yeah. And you guys just put it on them from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, talk about that. Was that something your coaches preached during the week? Like, hey, we got to get out on front. Yeah. And remind these guys that they're still little brother. They still belong in the shallow end. Mm -hmm. Like, tell me about that. Uh, well, heading into the week, uh, we're really focused on getting out to a good start because last season we didn't do that a bunch. We changed up our pregame a little bit to accommodate for that, and we were just all focused on first drive, go down, score. And I told the offense before we got in the huddle every single time, we score every drive. We score every drive. And we did besides one, but we had a few subs in. I wasn't in. But, uh, <laughs> but we scored every drive when we had starting offense in, and we – I feel like we, we protected the ball and did really well.
yeah, the offense has been something to watch. We'll take another time out here with Elliot Pascabell. When we get back, we'll talk about if this is the year that Volcano Vista can finally take the next step. Get over the hump. We're back with Hawks quarterback Elliot Paskett Bell. We were talking about game week and all that. And, you know, the question has to be asked, is this the team that's going to finally get over the hump, right? There's been some really good teams at Volcano Vista, but the season has ended in disappointment. Uh, and, I mean, it shows how hard it is to win a state title, mm -hmm. right? Because Volcano's had some really talented teams, but they've come up short. Yeah. First question is, do you guys talk about that around the program? Does, is it mentioned, or is it just like, now we got to do us? Um, it's not really mentioned so much. It's we think it's in it's in our minds because we believe we have a great coaching staff, we have a great team, and we believe that we can do it. But it's not really talked about so much because we know the more talk, we talk about it, the more it might slip away. But how special would it be to be the group that finally does it? It would be awesome because we, I I love Coach Wall and he's been like a great coach to me all throughout my years. Coach Bowling, Coach Williams, Coach McTeague, our offensive coaches. They've been, they've been great to me, and so I would love to get them one. And how special would it be for you individually as a quarterback? Because, I mean, there's been some pretty good quarterback. I mean, friend of the show, Jake Dethridge, mm -hmm. I mean, he threw some touchdowns through our windows. Oh, yeah. Right? So uh, you guys have had, obviously, Diego. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's been a pretty rich position. Yeah. So that's got to be a little extra motivation, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that would hopefully put my name a little bit up there, get my face on the oxygen wall, that'd be nice. Right? We have we have a couple players in there. Yeah, that's a pretty cool mural there. Yeah. The, that, so that's gotta be, so, well, I mean, since you bring it up, right? Yeah. So our, our fans that don't know, yeah. des describe that mural. Uh, it's a really cool mural, mural with um, a bunch of our, the greatest athletes from uh, Volcano Vista's history. Uh, for football, we only have David Cormier up there right now, but hopefully as, you know, as we go on and progress, hopefully we can get a few more up there. Right. Hopefully I can get up there. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that, I mean, there's got to be a lot of hoopers on that mural. Yeah, right? there's a bunch of hoopers. <laughs> that's a friend so, of the program. Yeah, that's right. Is, is, is that another thing? I mean, that's got to be something that the basketball team is so good, both of them, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, baseball has, has brought home a blue trophy, right? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's got to be something that's in the back of your guys' mind, like, hey, we got to put a banner up too, right? Yeah, that would, that would be the ideal situation. We really want to get one for the school, for our school experience. We have great fans, great student section, getting one for them, getting one for our staff and our coaches and everybody. That'd just be the best. Your student section does get pretty hype. Mm -hmm. So how is that, playing in front of such a huge student section? Um, they do a great job of always – they always keep us in the game. Like, no matter what the score is, they're always cheering for us and rooting for us, and they let us know if we're doing good or if we're doing bad. And our band does a really good job, too. They're, we have a great band, and they always keep us moving forward, marching down the field, and keep us in tune with the game. Man, you are a smooth operator. Are you, like, student body president or something? No. Because you checked <laughs> off the band. You checked – I mean, man, you could run for mayor of Volcano yeah. Vista. Right? Well, I did get in trouble last time I didn't mention cheer. Okay, yeah. Cheer does a great job, too. Yeah, your got... mom would get really upset if you didn't mention yeah, that. Yeah, she, she was a cheer, cheerleader, right? Yeah, she was a cheerleader in high yeah. school. Okay, yeah, man, you're, you're smooth, man. You're checking yeah. it all off yeah. here, right? <laughs> all right, so I, I, you handled that question really well. I, I figured that's something you guys think about, but you can't really talk about it because uh -huh. then it, it becomes a thing, right? Yeah. How cool is it to turn on the TV on a Friday or Saturday night and watch New Mexico State or whoever and see a Hawk on TV? That's the best because, you know, they came from the same background as us. They had the same walkers. Um, like, I knew, I don't really know many guys, but when I was a freshman, we had our 2019 class, and that was probably the best or the most talented class we've ever had. And a few of those guys are in college, and being able to see them, I remember when I was a little freshman, and telling me to go get the ball bag or just stuff like that, and I get to see them playing in college, and that's, right. that's great. And what's the tradition like there? What what I mean, how I mean, it's it's crazy to think about. I mean, the school hasn't been open very long. No, but it seems like years. they do a really good job of seniors bringing up freshmen. It seems yeah. like there's already that that tradition there. Talk about yeah. that. Uh, well, we have a great program for football at least. Um, we're all family. Right. Uh, varsity, JV, C team. You'll see us at all of their games because. We know every single person on the team, and we try and be like big brother and help them out as they go through high school and they figure out their way of life. And I see a lot of guys still around. The, like, I mean, I know David still comes back a lot. Oh yeah, right? yeah, he's and here. And so, so how? I mean, what's that like to you know to know that you have 
some guys that have already been through the program that you can, you know, work out with, mm -hmm. throw to, yeah. or just, you know, I would hit up for advice, whatever. Yeah. Th that, that piece is definitely there, right? Yeah, that's great to have. Uh, David came back for summer workouts this season. He was there for a few, just working on his game, and he was on the jugs ball, or on the jugs machine, working, getting closer and closer until his hands were right next to the machine. He was showing us, like, what it takes to be a college-level athlete. Right. He's a great player, and seeing everybody who used to, play come back on the field chat with coach wall and and get some working at the field it's awesome to see when you see a guy like david come back uh and you know he's wearing his medium shirt and, yeah. like does that make you put up some extra sets or like i, mean, I mean it's the most motivation you can get i mean he's a huge dude and it was i haven't really seen him in person until this season i didn't really realize how big he is and it's like geez, like, I need to start working out more. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you really start to notice, I started to notice it anyways, is when guys leave and then they come back just during the summer, right? Yeah. So the only time you see them is during the summer. Like, every summer I run into Zach Gentry and I'm like, what, what is going on yeah. over there? That I mean, like, he gets huger every time, right? Yeah. And, and the same thing with David. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, I only really get to see him usually at the academy basketball tournament and then maybe once during the summer. But you see just how much work those guys are putting in for the next level, right? Yes, sir. It's... That's really just amazing to see and to, I don't know, it's, it's cool to see how much football takes up of their life. Like you, like in, at the next level, you eat, sleep and breathe football. And I hope I get that opportunity because I love the game and I love being around it. And I want to be around it as long as possible. And how has that motivated you to, to kind of, you know, okay, that's where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So this is what I need to do. How has that motivated you? That's motivated me and showed me that I need to be more dedicated from last season. I feel like I'm bought in as much as I can be right now. I That's all I think about, really. I go home. I watch film. I think about the game, think about where I can improve. I'm, I, on my notes app, I have a bunch of things listed that I need to remember before every play and things and ideas I need to bring up with Coach Bowling, tell him what I see, what I think, what I think we can do better at. Now, if this playing thing doesn't work out, like, you sound like a coach already. Is that something in the back of your mind? Like, hey, I might, I might want to do this in 20 years, coach. Eventually, I'd love, okay, but I'd love you got to coach. some games to play yeah. still, right? Yeah. All right, last thing I want to talk about. We're running out of time already, but I would imagine the Cleveland game has been circled on your calendar since last year, right? Yeah. Talk about that. Well, I don't want to say too much or make too many predictions, but I feel like that should be... But it's driven you, right? Yeah, it's, it's really motivated me and helped me become a better player and a better quarterback. And I watched that film a lot to see what I did wrong in a bunch of scenarios and what I need to fix and what I need to get better at. And I hope I'm able to show them and show everybody that I'm new and improved this year, especially playing them. And the district, obviously, always the toughest district, right? Yeah. But uh, it seems like maybe this year it's a, a little more open than before. Is yeah. that what you guys are thinking? Yeah. Seeing Cleveland lose week one, it's like little cracks in their immortality. All right. But yeah. Um, they're still a great team. They will always be a great team. Same with Rio Rancho. They've, they're not so much slumping this year, but they're gone down from the higher standard they had last year. And hopefully we'll be able to take it to both of them this year. All right. Well, we'll be watching. Elliot, I was a big fan before I met you, but I am a huge fan now. Thank you so much for thank coming in. Me. And thank you, everybody, for watching, and good night.